Hey, this is Steve Bell and welcome to the MedTech Mavericks podcast. Um, today I've got another interesting one for you if you're a fan of the soft tissue surgical robotics. I'm going to do a very short um, overview of a system that's coming down the line, not here yet. Been a really rapid um, development for this system, uh, but I found it quite interesting and it's going to be one of the modular robotics. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a modular robot, which is... Um, what, what you know, I'm, I'm quite used to it because that's what I used to deal with, uh, and it's um, different than the boom robots. And, I, and I'll talk through some of the advantages and disadvantages a little bit as I show you the modular robot. Uh, and we're going to take, talk about the Renovo Surgical Carina system. So I'm going to take you through it, and what, because it's not out yet, there's not a lot of information. So um, I'm basically I'm going to go over their website, take you through their website, and. Uh, Give you my professional eye on what I think that I see um, as I as I walk through the through the website and the website's just had a refresh uh, by the way so that um, there's some more interesting details in there that I'll that I'll talk you through. So let me take you to the website. So here it is it's renovosurgical.com, uh, which you can see up here. Okay, so basically, um, let's see if we can get this to to work. Let's see if I can do this for you. I'm in trouble getting it to do. Oh, there we go. There's the animation. So you can see that this is a um, it's a modular cart based system, which is interesting, but it's got a set of arms that are very similar to what you'd see on something like an XI. So I'm going to walk you through this whole system in a, in a lot of details and just tell you what I see uh, as I see this. So from everything that I can see, it's called the Karina RAS platform. It's a platform that uh, basically has these small bedside carts and then it has an arm structure that comes off on a set of joints and ends up in a classic Z rail. And this is quite a small Z rail, which is quite interesting, the, uh, the amount of travel that it's got. And a fairly compact drive unit, which we'll talk about here, that takes instruments that look like eight millimeter instruments through their own ports. And then there's one arm, which is a dedicated scope arm, which holds the scope here. So it looks like you can have one scope and you can have three different instrument arms all at one time. So you've got the choice probably between three or four arms per case, which is quite interesting. And they sit on these, these small modular carts that go around the table. A couple of interesting things that I look at here. Uh, one is, it looks like you can bring these carts in at any angle that you want to the table. And that's very reminiscent of a Medtronic Go. Now, one of the things that I'll say is very different to the Hugo here uh, is just the pure dimensions. And anyone who's seen the uh, Medtronic Hugo will know that they've got very large um, bedside carts that they sit on. This here looks like the Carina carts are more of the dimensions, more or less, of something like a Versius. So you've basically got this um, small, compact bedside unit and on each one is the, is the arm that comes off with its different joints and then a Z rail at the end. And I'll talk a little bit more uh, at the end about the Z rail, because I think there's some things that are good about a Z rail and there's some things that are going to be challenging about a Z rail around a bed like this on a on a modular system. But you can basically see there um, what the system looks like. And, and the site talks a lot about um, hospitals in China. So this is a Chinese company. I'll talk about the team behind it because that's really interesting. But there's a team behind it out of China and um, it's a beautiful looking robot. It's, it's very, very nice looking. Let me give you a few more details to go into here. And let's, let's look from, from above on this. So one of the interesting things that I found about this robot is how much dimension you get from here all the way back to here on this arm. This is a relatively, relatively small looking arm and quite a slender and um, 
it doesn't look like it's a super heavy arm and it can't be that heavy because otherwise this base unit here would have to be a lot bigger and a lot heavier otherwise it would tip over and it looks like what they've done here is what I've been saying for a long time which is um, this is everything in my mind Hugo Raz from Medtronic should have been which is a small compact multi-arm robot and I think that it's, it's interesting here um, that they've probably got here what I would consider one of the nicest designs of a modular Z rail based robot. Yeah, and it's going to be um, interesting to see. Now, another thing that they've mentioned on the website, which I'll talk about in detail here, is it looks like they've got a fairly small, nice, slim camera system. And I can't from the silhouette work out if that's somebody else's, but I think this is this is their own proprietary camera system on here. It's going to be 3D HD, and I think that for now is okay. But I think in the next 12 months, we're going to see a rapid move to 4K systems. They talk about the fact that they've got integrated fluorescence. They don't say whether that's um, the standard black and white fluorescence or whether, and I can't imagine they've not done this because it's, it's the new norm that's coming. They've gone to the full colour fluorescence, which means you can see all the anatomy in full colour and you can superimpose the green or the blue or whatever colour you, you choose on top when you look at the ICG. ICG, indesign in green, that's what you inject. It's a dye, it fluoresces under infra infrared light. And basically, you can you can look at things like uh, where the cystic duct is. You can look at things um, where there's different anatomical structures or blood flow, where where the ICG is illuminated and shows up. And it shows here that they've got that. You know, it, it says here clearly that they've got the 3D HD laparoscopic vision system, and it's going to be the first that's going to have integrated fluorescence. And what's very interesting is that you look at the next bit, and then they've got patient specific 3d reconstruction of preoperative imaging so they're not giving too many hints away here but it looks like within their console system you are going to be able to get a if you take a 3d mri scan hour and you can 3d reconstruct that and show the model within uh, the vision system and what that means is that let's say you're looking for a tumor in, in, in a structure, it'll be able to show you where that tumor is or if there's blood, key blood vessels you want to avoid. You'll be able to see those in the 3D reconstruction. And what that will do is allow you to, as you're operating, navigate a little bit better uh, to avoid those structures or to find the structures if you're trying to find the structures. So I think this quite could be quite interesting. They're not coming out with a basic imaging system. They're coming out with 3D, HD, with fluorescence and with 3D reconstruction of preoperative imaging. So that's gonna be, a, relative to today, a fairly advanced imaging system. So let me go a little bit deeper into some of the, into some of the things here that, I, that, I, that I've seen. Um, so one of the things you can see here, and I don't know if I can zoom this in on it, there we go, is that the Z rail attaches to the port in a very similar fashion to an intuitive. You have a black band marker. So it looks like they've gone for the classic remote center, which is, you know, uh, well known, works, works well. And from what I can see here, these are fully wristed instruments. So that's good. And if you look at the interface here, I saw an old image where they have basically five drive wheels. So basically this is the top of the instrument. It slides out. You slide the instrument out, you slide it in through the port and it connects here and these drive mechanisms here. And if you were looking down on this face down, it'd be one, two, three, four, five are little drive wheels. And that gives you pitch, your rotation. Um, and it will also give the ability to drive things like staple in the future because you'll have another drive mechanism in there. So you have five, uh, you have five drive wheels in there that will be able to, to drive the the instruments for articulation, wristing, because it looks like a true wrist instrument, and you'd be able to drive a drive pack for something like a stapler. So it looks like they're building this ready for the future. And you can see here that the, on the Z rail, you can see the this is where it goes up and down. It's called a Z rail because this is basically how you control the Z axis of the instrument. So you control uh, X and Y using the arm, and then you use the Z axis to, to take the depth of how much this instrument goes in. 
Interesting little side note here, in case you hadn't noticed, that looks there like it's a 30 degree down scope. So yeah, quite interesting uh, to see that there. Let's zoom out a little bit and see if I can show you some more features of this. Um, let's go back to the beginning page here and I'll show you some features here that I saw uh, when I was looking at this. So it looks like it's got light bands here, which is one of the ways you're gonna be able to see the arms active. And you've got three button interfaces here. Uh, they have done very, very quick um, development of this. So basically, um, I don't know if I can make this go in the way that I want it to go. Let me try this again. No, I can't seem to make that go the way that I want it to go. There we go. Um, but what they've done is they've um, they've already got between 219 and 224. They've already got this from 219 to 224. They've got this already into clinicals. So they're actually doing clinical cases now, which is quite, um, quite impressive, really. Some big investors behind them, uh, Lily Asian Ventures. They've got um, a lot of other Asian funds behind them. Uh, that's a lot, a lot of money behind them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into some of the news in a minute. But you can see that they're already in the clinical environment there. And it's nice. I mean, look, that system is nice. It's small, it's not coming from the head. It's not massive and taking over the whole operating room. And in their news articles, there's, there's a couple of really nice uh, images of this that I'll show you in a minute. So let me move quickly to some news articles and there's reasons that I wanna show this. So here you can see again, uh, the small modular. It is really small and it looks like it's really a nice industrial design. And the whole size of the system looks good and small. Um, I wanted to go and um, show you into some of the news articles because you've got a couple of big names that are working with him. So you've got Milani here from Brazil and then you've got Para de Villa, who's you know, a massive name in the world of surgical robotics. And they've been on it. They've been on the system. And uh, there are some images in here. You can see, again, really good human dimensions of this, numbered arms. And it's not too massively imposing around the bedside. But what I would want to point is that this suffers the problem of all Z-Rail systems which is the way that these things work is that they, they work around a remote center and they imagine this is the outside with the instrument that goes down. To move the instrument inside, the whole arm moves outside. And when you've got two close together, you can very en easily end up with clash. And that's one of the big problems of Z-Rail systems. And then becomes an even bigger problem when you mount them onto carts. So I don't know if they're gonna develop any collision software avoidance, uh, if the carts know where each other are, then they could potentially do that. But if not, that would be my one prediction of what they, they'll have to deal with, either as engineers or a software team, is how do you make sure that this thing doesn't end up with a lot of clash? And again, if you see that compared to a lot of the other systems out there, um, you'll see that that is a very small, neat and compact modular system. I think, I think it looks really, really nice. Okay. Now, there was somewhere on the site, and I'll see if I can try and find it for you. You can actually see the console. Uh, where was the console? Let me try and find that for you. Mm -hmm. It could be on here. So let me go back to here. Right. You can see that very simple controls. There, that's what I wanted to show you was the console. So it, what you can see is that the console is in between an XI and a DaVinci 5 in terms of size and dimensions. So they've got a, um, a much smaller, I don't know if I can pause this. No, you can't really pause it, but you've got a much smaller um, viewing console on there than the XI, but it doesn't look quite as good and as funky as the DVI. But what they've gone for is they've gone for with the um, Carina, they've definitely gone for a, 
um, a Da Vinci style. So it's pedal controlled. It's the immersive view inside. So they didn't go for an open console. And I find that quite interesting. So that's quite different than the Hugo, quite different than the Versius. Hugo and Versius both on for open consoles with open screens. They decided to go after the um, intuitive um, paradigm, which is you put your head into the console, you look through a 3D viewfinder, it'll give you a very good um, 3D image, but you do lose some of that contact with the operating room staff. Now on a boom robot, I think that's less of an issue because the, 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 the arms are all coming off a single boom. I predict they're going to have a couple of problems here with the, um, I think they're going to have a couple of problems with the arm management because you're going to need to be doing arm management. And what happens is you're, you know, if you're in the console, you've got to come out to look across and to look at the arms and see what's happening because you do end up with a lot more arm management issues when you're dealing with a modular system because they're not always coming from the same place. They're not always in the same spatial relationship to each other as with a boom robot. And you can go and look at my article that talks about that, about, that talks in detail about the um, boom robots and, and how you sell against modular robots, because this will suffer the same problem as all the modular robots, which is that the setup and the, the infinite number of places that you can put it brings in an extra dimension of problems. And especially in the learning curve, you do want to be very aware as a surgeon to be able to look across and see where those arms are and how they're interacting. That's going to be a big part of the, the learning process. Other things that I notice in here is that they um, they have those three simple buttons. There seems to be a power button. There seems to be an orientation button, which is the central button that you'll see in a minute. And there seems to be um, uh, an up and down button. Um, but there is some kind of link button there. And I do wonder whether these bases can link to each other. So you've got your orientation button there, your power button, your height up and down, and it looks like you've got some kind of link button in there, uh, which is quite interesting. So it looks like you've got several ways that you can adjust the height of the arm, uh, either directly from on here, or basically you can, you can do it from the console itself. So this is going to be interesting to see uh, the way that this rolls out, but nice, very simple interface. Very, very nice. Now, the team that's behind this, so there are already 130 plus people, uh, 50 patent applications, a lot, lot of global advisors. And you've got, you got you know, two of the big ones that I showed you in that news article there, uh, but they've got lots of other advisors I'll show you in a minute. Uh, typical company stuff. But let, let me get into to some of this, which I think... Uh, is very, very interesting for anyone to see. So you, you often want to ask who's behind a company as a team. So you've got the fantastic John Ma in there, who is the uh, founder and chairman. And you need to understand that he is from the background of Intuitive and from what was the Ch Intuitive partner in China, which was Fosun. So John is a massively experienced industry executive in terms of robotics. Uh, yeah, so really important. Then you've got um, Ying Mao, which uh, I apologise if I'm butchering your name there, Ying. Um, but he's the CTO. Now look at look at that pedigree there, Jane G. Oris. So so this this is a person who's really really understands the world of robotics. You've got other people in here that um, come from different areas of uh, the medical device world, so they really understand it. You've got other people from uh, Fosun Pharma, so they they've got the, the robotics background. You've got pure robotics in here from KUKA Robotics, which is really, really important. And then you've got an expert in imaging that's in there. And that's why I think they've got a good focus on their imaging, why they've developed their own imaging system. Then if you look at the um, advisory board, you've got some of the uh, former VPs of R&D from j, &J Oris. Founding teams are uh, intuitive, so big heavy hitters with David there. You've got Chris. Um, who's again VP of engineering comes out of J and J's Ethicon unit um, and intuitive. So understanding the whole laparoscopic field there and the intuitive field. And then again, you've got another VP of engineering um, who comes out of J and J's Oris um, side of things, side of the house. So this team will have understood deeply the problems that J and J will have had with their system. 
And I, I can't help but think, and again, I'm just speculating here. This is pure speculation by me because I have no inside information. That they saw the table mounting of the verb stroke auris systems. And like many companies before them will have understood the challenges of arm management and patient workflow when you put it on the bed. And I think that that's why they've gone to the bedside cart mounted as a lot of other people have done throughout history um, and successfully have got them on bedside carts so that you can get them the right distance away from the bed, but also bring them in close when you need to. And that's really important in arm management to avoid clashes. Then, of course, you've got um, you've got a lot of um, different uh, experts here from from uh, first clinical experts, clinical advisory board. And you've got a lot out of China. Uh, but there are two very important names here that jumped out at me when I looked at their site, which is the um, name of Vip Patel, who anyone who knows surgical robotics knows that he is one of the top urologists in the world, probably maybe still the biggest Da Vinci user ever. And then you've got Eduardo Paradavilla, who is another massive user of Intuitive. They will be able to give incredibly good insights into the use of this into urology and into general surgery but uh, you know having I mean, knowing VIP and having worked also in labs with Eduardo in the past they've got an incredible knowledge of how the engineering works both of them they understand what the system needs to do for it for it to be successful so I think that the team behind this I mean I just think it's a completely massive solid team and you know full credit to John and for pulling this team together I think it's a really impressive team so um do i think it's going to work yes uh, have they already started into clinicals yes and you can go and look on their site uh, and some of the news articles here that they've already actually started doing some of the uh, multi-center clinical trials so they've done that um i think they're going to start in china and then they're eventually going to work their way out through asia and then come to europe if I was sitting there as one of the other players, would I be worried about this? So let me give you a little bit of my insight on that. I think it's a competitor to all of the modular robots, of course. And I think that um, it's going to be the, the biggest company that this is going to impact is Medtronic. I think if you've got a choice of this or you've got a choice of the Hugo, I think most people are going to say, if I'm going to have a Z-Rail mounted modular robot, then I'm going to go for the Carina because it's small and compact and in there. I think it goes head-to-head -head directly with Versius, but they're two different paradigms. One's a V-Risk system versus a Z-Rail system. And that'll come down to, again, how you know do, do people want more of a laparoscopic approach or do they want more of a robotic feel? It will, of course, compete with some of the boom robots like uh, Medicaroid, Intuitive, Da Vinci 5. It'll compete with all of those as well. So I think this is a very interesting um, entrant into the market that's coming in the next couple of years. And again, uh, hats off to John and the Renovo team. It looks beautiful. I apologize to all of you that this is probably a bit of a scatterbrained um, podcast today. But I was asked multiple times, what do you think of Renovo? What do you think of Renovo? And as they recently updated their website and gave a few more insights into this, and now at least I can say for sure that it's an intuitive style console and not an open console, I thought I'd give a brief in, uh, intro and an update to it. And if you haven't seen this before, then it's really worth one to watch. And I wish John and the team um, all the luck in the world with this. And I'm going to watch this and um, I'll try and get John on one of my podcasts and uh, his, you know, his actual real opinion on this. So, um, yeah, so that's that's it for the podcast for today. Um, I hope that's been useful. I hope that's been interesting. And I look forward to catching you again as we talk about more on soft tissue surgical robotics on the MedTech Mavericks podcast. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.